So now I'd like to invite uh, Miss Rachel Blinney, two minutes and a half. <laughs> well, Please. thank you so much. And Ms. Stewart, I want to come back to you and thank you so much for giving us that information. I know that the Merlot Davidson class action uh, was brought forward by so many brave women who were trying to obtain justice. And tragically, what we saw, of course, was Vax clawbacks not only defeated the purpose of that action uh, and the objections of the settlements, it, it re-victimized women again. Um, so I guess my question to you, and you've talked about it a little bit already, is, I get, you know, one, not only, in my opinion, did it re-victimize, I think it also silenced other women who may have come forward. And the whole point of these actions, I think, are to stop the behavior. Um, so I just want to know your thoughts on, did this also block women from coming forward? And the second one, uh, you talked about the committee having a strong recommendation uh, moving forward on this. Do you think that uh, a recommendation saying that the legislation should be changed to acknowledge, and I, I actually don't think your definition is too broad, I think any time a person is in the workplace and they are violently attacked as a cause of that workplace, especially in this context, we, we need to honour that. So I'm just, if you could answer those two questions. Did it block other women from coming forward? Are we now missing a bunch of, of women who could have come forward? And two, is the legislation the smartest way for us to go forward as a committee in our recommendation? Thank you for the question. Um, uh, so on the first one, did it block women? I uh, Yes, it did. It did. Uh, the information that we have, uh, so, and people talk. So somebody may be, uh, have a bad experience and uh, other women, other members are going to hear, hear about that and, and hear about it fairly quickly. So uh, it's our information that one third of claimants were not accepted under Marilyn David Davidson. And even those ones whose claims were accepted did not get assessed at the level they expected. Uh, presumably they went in expecting uh, to be uh, have their claims accepted at a higher level. Uh, they didn't get that. Uh, and then there were other women uh, that we know of uh, who were affected who could not even face putting a claim in. Uh, so I guess in, the, in our council's view, whatever numbers uh, the RCMP or VAC have for claimants in the class action, they likely fall far, fall short, uh, fall far short of those who were actually affected uh, or suffered some kind of abuse during their service. Uh, and uh, we also have uh, anecdotal evidence of people who did go through the lengthy process of putting in a claim. Uh, they were shattered all over again, and in some cases uh, suffered new PTSD that they hadn't even had before. Uh, so as you said, it, it, there was re-traumatizing all around, and uh, it was a situation where uh, you know, the, the class actions should not even have been necessary. The RCMP had known about these problems for years and years and years, but they, they did nothing. And uh, certainly the women who were brave enough to come forward with those, uh, uh, it was, uh, I'm sure, their expectation, as it was our expectation, that it would change things, that there would be behavior correction. Money was not going to make them whole again. Thank so just briefly. Oh, yeah, yes. Okay. Thank 